way, in this example, what we are going to do is we are going to um, solve a quadratic equation by another form. It's called the square root method. Uh, this one doesn't always work, but this one works um, when you have something in a situation like this where you have a term that's being squared. Instead of doing all of the work to square this out and to um, foil this out and get it all simplified to where it equals zero, what we want to do first is to make sure that we isolate this term. So we want to make sure that our squared term is alone on one side. And in this case, it already is. There's nothing on the outside. If you had something on the outside, then you would move that to the other side. Um, so with this, what we are going to do is we are just going to take our equation and we're going to do the opposite of what is being done to our term here. So the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So we would just take the square root of both sides. And we have to remember with this, because it's a quadratic and it has um, at most two possible solutions, we have to remember that there are two numbers that I can square to give me nine. So you always want to make sure that you write the plus or minus um, button or the plus or minus sign here to tell us that both positive three squared and negative three squared give us nine. And in quadratics, we are looking for both solutions. So now what we would do, once we've taken the square root of both sides and we put the plus or minus, we would separate this into two different equations. So either 2x plus 3 equals negative 3 or 2x plus 3 equals positive 3. Now we just have two very basic linear equations that we have to solve for x. So for this one, if we subtract 3 from both sides, um, make sure that you pay attention to your signs. This would cancel out and we end up with 2x equals negative 6. And then to get x completely by itself, we would just divide both sides by 2, and we end up with x equals negative 3. So that would be our first solution. The second solution, we would subtract the 3. We would do the exact same thing. This time we get 2x equals 0. And when I divide anything, 0 by anything, it ends up giving me 0, so x equals 0. You can always leave your solutions like this. Um, sometimes it asks for set notation, so if it asks for set notation, you would just write it as 0 and negative 3. Um, this would just be the set notation. I'm going to write the negative 3 first, not that it really matters, but just on a number line, negative 3 comes first. So this is x such that x is either negative 3 or 0. Don't forget to check, and I should have checked it before I wrote it in set notation. I was just trying to make sure I remember to tell you that. Um, so when we check this, we would just plug it back into our original question. So we would do 2 times negative 3 plus 3 squared. And we're going to ask ourselves, does this equal 9? So if we simplify this, we end up with negative 6 plus 3 squared equals 9, and we get negative 3 squared equals 9, which is true. So we know that the x equals negative 3 works. And then we would do the same thing for our other solution. We would just see, is 2 times 0 plus 3, if I square that, does that equal 9? And this just is really 0 plus 3, and we get 3 squared equals 9, which we know is true. So both of these work. And like I said, depending upon the textbook that you're using or the requirements, sometimes it requires set notation. Um, most of the time, this is acceptable too. So you would either write your solution as x equals negative 3 or x equals 0, or you could write it in set notation. As always, thanks for watching. Please make sure that you check back for more videos frequently if you don't see what you need. Um, if you're on my website, mathandstatshelp.com, just hit the contact and fill out the contact form and tell me what you need. Um, if you're on my YouTube channel, just comment down below. As always, thanks for watching.